middle class is in trouble and it's all because the cost of living is going up you know inflation and just you know the government making poor choices the feds making poor choices for example you know increasing their interest rates and the middle class uh is going to go for a rough ride if something doesn't change soon the first thing i was like actually looking at the reason why the middle class is having so much trouble now is uh, the income that they made in 1970 so this was very interesting uh was fifty nine thousand nine hundred thirty four dollars adjusted for inflation okay so this is adjusted and now in 2020 i mean this is four years ago it was ninety thousand one hundred thirty one dollars but the problem is the cost of living is so much higher now than compared to 1970. Uh, i was looking at the cost of the you know homes and it was so much cheaper to buy a house in the 1970s compared to right now and i believe there is no middle class anymore um just because the homes are in the u.s they're like four hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars where there used to be you know 80 grand 70 grand i think in the 1970s they were like 15 to twenty thousand dollars so sure they made fifty nine thousand nine thirty four in today's money uh and you know if you look at the houses that cost 20 grand back then even if adjusted for inflation is nowhere near 500 grand okay and it's worse in canada canada's getting it even worse and their income is very very close it's very close to actually it's less the middle income in in canada is around seventy six thousand, and their houses are uh, around eight hundred thousand is the average price of a home in i would say the gta which is in ontario canada british columbia is even worse so they're having it even tougher and this is why there's a lot of people in canada now especially in those places where they have to have two to three families per house you know a million dollars for a house you know my home here i bought in 2015 and you know this is over four thousand square feet so it's, it's a decently sized home and I paid um, $808,000 in 2015, which to the American people are like, wow, that's a lot of money, right? Because you can get a way cheaper house in the U.S. Uh, at the same size compared to Canada. But I just have to compare it to other houses in the area. So I got this house for you know 800 grand in 2015. And 2021, when the market was peak here in Canada, my house down the street there's a, a very similar home sold for 2.1 million so i mean it's good for me because i built all this equity in this home uh i know this doesn't happen all around the world canada is just terrible for this because they don't have enough homes uh and there's too much um you know too much of a demand uh you know justin Trudeau is letting in 500,000 people in every year and and uh, we built barely any more homes so what do you think is going to happen so the demand um, for the homes is super high and there's not enough supply and it will take at least 20 years to catch up to the supply that we need until the homes start coming down in price. So Canada is a disaster and it's all because of their real estate market. So let's just look at the middle class. So when it comes to this economy, the middle, you know, the American people, uh, even Canadians, I mean, they're doing the right thing what they're supposed to do to have the economy moving forward you have to spend money and right now they are doing their job right to keep the economy afloat um the issue is that the you know they need help now like the cost of living is so high uh because the interest rates are so high so the federal reserve has to start looking into this because it's um it's going to affect a lot of different sectors um, so if the Federal Reserve doesn't cut interest rates, something is going to break. Something is going to break. And I actually found out recently that the commercial real estate uh, sector is going to be in a lot of trouble if the interest rates stop, if they don't drop soon. Um, right now, there's a ton of lo uh, loans renewing in 2024 for commercial. And if the rates don't drop, you know, they can't afford these. Uh, commercial buildings anymore and the sad reality is a lot of the people that bought these uh, commercial buildings are not you know super rich wealthy people right um, they are actually everyday people that put their life savings in this 
and now are depending on the Federal Reserve to drop the rates. Uh, end of the day, if the commercial, the interest rate is too high, they're not going to cash flow and they won't have enough money to feed themselves, right? Their, their families. So if that is the whole point of the commercial real estate is, you know, they get a, you know, someone rents the space out and uh, they charge uh, rent for it. And then that has to be higher than the cost of carrying the loan for this commercial building. And right now that sector is going to be in a lot of trouble. Vanguard, you know, one of the biggest asset companies out there are holding at least over $9 trillion in actual assets. They believe that the feds are not going to cut the rates and they got their own theory on this. So that is, you know, what do they know that we don't is the question, but we'll get back into this. You know, top us asset manager Vanguard. So just so you know, I'm not full of crap. <laughs> it doesn't expect the federal reserve to cut interest rates this year defying the view of the feds official that rates might be reduced three times. So, so there's an article here that's saying that the feds will have to really cut rates three times in 2024, despite the inflation uptick. I mean, they got no choice. Like their interest rates are super high. Uh, loans are going to start defaulting and that's going to a collapse or even, you know, head into a recession that you know, the Fed doesn't want to do really. End of the day, if the interest rates stay high, um, American people are going to stop spending. That's it. And immediately we're going to start heading to a recession. That's just how it works. If there's no spending happening in the economy, we're going backwards. So, I mean, the Fed is in a tough position, even real estate when it comes to commercial. If the rates continue to stay high, this sector will fail or start failing, which means smaller regional banks will start failing. And the Fed doesn't want to do that. So I believe that there will be cuts this year. Um, I hope it's, you know, a good amount, uh, because end of the day that we we've been at, even in Canada, we're, we're at 5%. I think the U S is at 5.5. Uh, it's just the, we have, I haven't seen this in a very, very long time. And if people go back in the eighties and they're like, Oh, interest rates were high, but you know, cost of living was still way, way lower. You know, homes were way cheaper back then. So if you look at, you know, the power of your dollar back then, it was a lot better compared to today. So we can't really compare it in the past. So what should you do right now? So, uh, you know, if, if you can get a higher paying job, that'll be the best to, you know, ride this wave because end of the day, you got to protect you and your family. Uh, but that is sometimes not easy to do. Another thing you can do is you can start a side hustle, right? Um, I actually made a video yesterday explaining a pretty good side hustle that people can get started in. That can make them a decent amount of money uh, where I was finding products from overstock, listing them on eBay for a profit. And if it's sold uh, for a profit, right? So we're listing them higher on eBay. So when it's sold, we just go back to overstock uh, and then you, sh you put in the customer's information, uh, their address, and then they ship overstock will ship to your customer direct. And they actually like that. It's called drop shipping and they really, really like that business model. So basically you get paid first and then you place the order, right? So that's how it's done. And that's in my last video. Uh, I'll actually post it in the end of this actual video. So you can take a look at that. Very, very powerful. Make sure you watch that to the end. Um, step three, if you don't, if you already have a good savings right now, then I would go to step three. If not, I would start saving money just in case, right? Just in case while um, the interest rates are still high. Um, I would start, you know, having an emergency fund um, in case something happens, right? And you should always have an emergency fund, um, at least three to four months worth of your income, just, if, you know, as, as an emergency, right? That's really what it's about. If you do have that, then I will invest in something. Um, right now I'm investing in, uh, so I'm, I'm already in real estate. I'm already doing uh, you know, EFTs, I'm in the market as well. That's averaging me around 8% return a year. So my la my third thing I'm invested in is something called um, crypto staking. So it's not like where you buy a coin and you just hold on to it. And all these other people are doing that has a huge amount of risk. So what we do is, or what I do is um, I find projects that legit projects have legit backings. And all I do is put my funds into that company. I stake into it 
and what they do is that company with all their trading fees that when, when people are trading on their platform, they put the, these fees into a pool and then whoever is staking their crypto into that pool gets a cut. So right now I have a few projects where it is, um, they're paying me over 60% a year, right? So, which is very, very powerful. And I have hundred percent control over it. And, um, I even have some insured. So there's, you can even buy insurance on your capital, uh, where they charge you like 1% a month. So if you're making 60% a year, it's good to have additional insurance just so if there's like a 20 to 30% uptick, you'll be covered, especially on your main capital. And uh, right now, yeah, I have a bunch that's doing 60. Uh, sometimes if I get in an early project that is, you know, just started that I feel is a really good project, uh, they're at like 2000% a year. But the thing is, the more people that get into this pool, uh, the, the lesser your return becomes. So, so we just try to find projects or my team and I just find projects where they're paying, you know, at least 60%, 60% or higher. And again, if we feel like the project is not paying as high as it's getting below that 60% mark, we just pull our money out and we put it into a different project and we just rinse and repeat. So we, I actually have some students that actually took, uh, that are making really good money on in their investment. They're, uh, they were up and running in three days. Okay. And, um, and last but not least, step four, if rates don't drop, stop spending actually spot stop wrong spot spending sheesh spot don't spot spend stop stop spend spending because end of the day if 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 you don't need something don't buy it if you have that money i rather invest it or have it in a savings account one or the other don't buy depreciating assets unless you have enough cash flow where you're like okay i'm good Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you got a lot of value. And by the way, that video that I was talking about with a side hustle was this one here. I'll have it at the end of this video as well. So you can take a look. I actually just posted it yesterday. And uh, yeah, so you should check that out or watch this end screen and you'll see a video pop up, which will be that video. So I hope you got a lot of value. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. And if you want to learn how to get into, so two things, all right. I have two things for you today depending on what you want to do. If you want to increase your capital to supplement your income, um, my number one side hustle is something called digital marketing. I've been doing it for 10 years and you, you'll be up and running within three to you know two to three weeks. Okay. So this can supplement some of your income. And if you do it long enough, it can be enough where you can quit your job. Right? So that's what happened to me. I used to be a car mechanic. And if you want to go there, I'll have the link in the description below. I'll just call it uh, extra capital. Okay, so extra capital. I'll have the link to that. It's actually a, I'll I'll send you over a free ebook on how it all works, and then you can decide if you want to get into that. The second one is if you have capital already that you can invest. Um, my number one recommended method right now is because it's just crushing is crypto staking but you have to do it in a right way. You have to do it where you're educated enough, where you know what you're doing and you're, you know, you foolproof the plan. And also I rather you work with people that know what they're doing than you trying to figure it out and messing up. So if you want to learn how to do crypto staking, where it's very, it's semi-passive, you just got to check in once or twice a week, once you're set up just to see how your investment is doing. And then you can either, Keep your investment there or get into a different project. Um, visit my website, themillionairejob.com. We'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, watch my business partner's video, Dan. He's the one who really runs it. He's been doing it for several years. I've been doing this since 2022. Uh, so he's a ninja behind this. Watch his video. So he explains how this all works, right? It's like a training. And then if you are super interested, uh, hop on a call with us and we'll show you, you know, we'll see what your goals are and then we'll show you exactly what your game plan would be in the crypto market where you don't have to trade mine or anything like that. You're not glued to any screen. Literally, once you deploy your crypto in a project, it's set it and forget it. Just check in a couple of times a week and you'll be good. And that's what our students are doing. Right now, this month, we have, I believe, 15 openings because we do work on 
uh, we do have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, approach. And also we do have weekly calls, uh, to keep you updated on, you know, what's happening in the markets in general. So, you know, if the stock market is kind of getting hit, we know that the crypto market is going to, you know, follow suit slightly. If the stock market is going up, it's, you know, crypto market goes up. So it, it kind of, they follow each other a little bit. So we keep you up to date on the news. So you know what you're doing. And also we train you on how to do it. And we also show you a long-term game plan on how to build wealth by just staking your crypto. It's better than putting it in the bank, right? The bank is paying like half a percent interest. And even the markets, even like EFTs are okay. They're, they're averaging like 8%, but hey, 60% is better. It's just a lot of people don't know about this strategy. And this is why the people that do know are crushing it. And it's almost, almost virtually risk-free, especially if you know what you're doing. Okay, obviously if you're brand new and you decide not to go with our training, and you decide to do it yourself, then yeah, you're gonna risk a lot of things, okay? But if you know what you're doing, you get educated, we show you exactly which projects, you know, what we're what we're doing and how to deploy, how to know when to exit and all that stuff, then you know, you the risk, you reduce your risk, okay? So anyway, that is the millionaire I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, buddy.